Thanks for coming back for another episode, or I feel like this is more like vlogs. I actually, just before this, I was like, oh, it's Tuesday. I need to record another video. I was watching um, some of my old vlogs. I did weekly vlogs, which were much, much easier to edit. And I would just snippet stuff. Um, I think I did it all on an iPad as well, trying to limit the uh, requirement for fully fledged editing tools and stuff. And I was actually quite pleased the fact that I had vlogged it. It was back when um, Kim and I first got married and we were starting our journey together and also independently as me doing uh, business stuff. And she was doing some music things on the side of her law career at the time. So it was really encouraging to watch back uh, some of those weekly vlogs. They're quite funny as well. And um, yeah, I'd encourage you if you've not started creating videos, um, even if you just create them for yourself so you can watch them back in like four or five years. Um, the, it's quite interesting. It's quite funny watching it back. I look a little bit slimmer and a bit younger, but I still have the same um, kind of like thirst for getting this information out to the masses and, and helping people, which is cool. So it's been great to just snip back and just jump along a couple of them. Um, to see, and my editing skills weren't too bad um, in the weekly vlogs. There was some music in the background and so forth. So um, obviously these are a little bit lower purely because I want to focus on executing and getting them out there and sharing some of my thoughts as well. So um, yeah, if you've not ever done any videos, just document your thinking, your, um, your life, what's going on right now. Because in a, a couple of months' time or, or a couple of years' time, they're, they're fun to watch back for your own enjoyment, let alone uh, anyone else's benefit as well. Um, but this week, my um, books have arrived. So I've got Life's Journeys, which is the brand that I'm going under. Try new things. And this band is the, because I've done it as a proof. And then I've got my Welsh book as well. So Triach, uh, Triach, Teithia Bowid is basically life's journeys in Welsh and Triach Bethe Newydd is try new things in Welsh. And, um, yeah, I'm super pleased with them. The only one, um, kind of mess up is I've used a QR code on the back and uh, the company that I used to do the QR codes, they now have like, Hey, you've ended your seven day subscription. So they've disabled the QR code. So I've just uploaded new, um, uh, new QR codes that actually go to the correct places, which ultimately go to the, um, Amazon page so you can buy them all. Uh, but what you can see is I'll flick through it so you can see what's inside it. So it's just very simple drawings and writing. And then in the back, what I've done, if I show you on the, on the, um, Welsh one, sorry, English one, I've basically like, now it's your turn. So at the back, because I needed to, you might remember me saying, sorry, I've got an itchy nose. You might remember me saying I needed to extend it, um, to 24 pages. So at the back, what I've done is want to try new things? Well, now it's your turn. And then basically in this right hand side, you draw what you want or you write what you want. And then there's a tick list of like, I've tried it. I've enjoyed it. And I thought that's a great way to get somebody to repeat, um, use your, your book or come back to your book. Um, and it's a nice way to expend, extend the book. So I didn't have to write any or draw any extra pages. I could just, um, add that in. So they're on Amazon now, which is great. And I'm super pleased that this is the the third pillar, the intellectual property pillar as the, the first point of um, my first stake in the ground for that aspect of it, which is really, really good. So I'm super pleased of it. And I keep on going around the house saying, hey, Kimmer, I'm an author, I'm an author to elongate the positivity. We're very good in life, um, kind of like going over negative thoughts or negative experiences um, or, um, sad experiences uh, or sad things, but it's much, much harder to repeat and, and elongate a good experience or a positive thing. Um, so when they do happen, try and extend it. So you don't just talk about it that hour or that day, see if you can kind of like bring it up again the next day. And it might seem a bit weird. Um, but it kind of just, uh, like milks out the positive energy of a positive thing because it's taken me quite some time. It's not easy. Um, Obviously it'll look simple, um, but it's not easy to come up with it and put it together. So it has been a bit of work to, to do that. Uh, the second book is in production. So I need to just draw it all um, and write it out, but I've got the ideas uh, sketched out as well. So that'll be coming. Uh, and I'm very mindful kind of starting the new year that I've had this um, kind of like image. I used to do cross country when I was a kid. And I remember we were walking down, uh, running down this um, 
like thorn bushes as it were left and right side and we're on this like muddy path and we're back to back so there's no room to go around left or right of anybody we're back to back and because we're all bunching up um not because there were branches but we're just bunching up because of the mud everybody then the slower you go more people get stuck because there isn't this kind of like velocity or like um level of speed that everybody's working at so the slower you go the more likely you get stuck i think people were losing their shoes in this mud and all sorts of stuff so then had to pull it out and run uh, barefoot for a bit before they were able to get their shoes back on um but that like image is kind of stuck in my brain um and it's kind of enhanced a little bit with the idea of branches so branches kind of get in your way and slow you down so if it's not other people slowing me down and i'm not necessarily saying that other people are slowing me down um it's like branches get in the way which are kind of like mindset things um get in the way to slow you down and then once you've hit a particular velocity the mud starts to kind of take effect as well um so it's whether or not you can keep a certain velocity to push through these branches um so you don't get stuck in the mud because getting stuck in the mud slows you down even more which pulls out the velocity and pulls out this consistency that you're getting as well and a really simple like real life example of that is a, a to-do list now i've bought a whiteboard so I can write a to-do list so I can be more visual rather than everything being digital um so I can see it uh, properly and I've had like a particular to do around the insider product that we're working on that I want to um, basically achieve as, as my goal. And what ends up happening is extra stuff through day to day, extra stuff gets added to your list. So obviously as um, I'm running the show, running the business, I get involved in all the finances and stuff. So today is a great example where I spotted a discrepancy with the amount of PIYE pay as you earn like national insurance stuff that I was paying to the government. And then I was like, actually, I need to backtrack this and find out where it is because I need to update the standard, um, the, the, um, the standing order that I've got set up because I don't want to be above or below. I want it to be exact, um, for cash flow purposes. And then it stumbles into a big conversation of gaining access to that. And, and that, like accidental thing becomes a to-do list of actually there is a discrepancy. I need to fix the discrepancy. So that becomes a to-do list item. Then in going through everything, I realized that, um, I rang HMRC. I'd actually been overpaying, um, so much so that there's a 2000 pound, um, like overpayment on the account. And I was like, well, that's great. I want that back. <laughs> so getting that back. So cool. I've now technically kind of made two grand, um, which will come back in seven days. But the, the benefit or the good thing of that is shadowed by the fact that that was never on my to-do list. It wasn't on my to-do list. I spotted it. I then went down the rabbit hole because I needed to fix it. Um, otherwise you won't fix it. And, and you know, it goes to the bottom of the list. Um, so the urgency of it was high up the list. So it becomes an item. You have a success with that item, but it was never on the to-do list. So you don't feel like you've done anything positive for the day, even though it's extremely positive. So I find that that's a classic like branch that gets in the way that slows you down. And I've started to, when I'm really conscious about it, there's lots of things um, that can distract, especially when it's a bit firefighty, um, taking you away or adding extra things on your to-do list, which shoves that one thing that you want to get done this week further down the list. Um, so I'm very mindful of trying to avoid that. And I think this year we'll be trying to, you know, chop the branches a little bit quicker. So then it doesn't lose the momentum. So you get stuck in mud because ultimately mindset wise, you feel a bit like a bit of a, not a failure as such, but yeah, let's say a little bit, oh, I'm failing. I've not done the task a little bit demotivated, um, regardless of the fact that you've done something extra and made money in doing something extra or, or saved some money in extra as well. So I'm very, um, very aware of, of that kind of, um, kind of dynamic at play and trying to avoid at all costs, um, doing that. And of course, some things is because you go down rabbit holes and, um, you go down rabbit hole that you spot something and then you're like, this becomes the major thing, or you would rather do something a bit, uh, bit more interesting. So, um, last week to do item was do my VAT return, but a VAT return sucks and it takes a long time to go through and, um, match all your transactions and make sure everything's okay. And then submitting it and so forth. So I basically kept on pushing that down the list and would, um, put new things on my to-do list that were a bit more interesting and so forth. So I'm very mindful that that in itself, 
um, can bring down the sense of efficiency because ultimately what you want is to challenge yourself or question yourself. Like has today been efficient or not? And technically today has been efficient, um, because I have done good things. Uh, and then if you can do efficiency more than inefficiency in a collective ongoing way, then you will naturally achieve any goal you set because efficiency will get you there. Um, so I found that that kind of mindset stuff, a way that to-do list keeps on getting longer and trying to counteract or counter counteract that stuff, um, with prioritizing the, the to-do list at all costs. Um, even though there are sometimes fires that feel like they are things that you need to put out urgently. And then, um, another thing I've been working on is a, a bit of a small bets. So small bets, um, comes off this idea. I think this person runs a small bets community where it's just people creating small digital products, uh, whether or not they're, um, information products or communities or, um, software as a service. And, um, they're just creating it together to get them out. It might take you a weekend to build or a week to build, get it out there and get paid customers. And I've always tried to do these small bets stuff. So what I have, one, one thing that I do have is a jobs board, a Welsh jobs board called jobin.com. So that's a bit of a small bet. So I'm currently, um, making zero money off it, but I've put a Welsh jobs board. It's more efficient than other jobs boards. Um, it's mobile friendly and I'm hoping that that will gain some traction, which is I'm currently, um, in talks with one, um, government department to get, uh, jobs posted on there. That's a bit of a small bet. Took me a weekend to, to put together. The second small bet is, um, I realized that Google spelt the Welsh way dot com is available as a domain. So I bought the domain and then I just basically created a very simple website that runs Google using a dot com domain to find Welsh content. Um, and that has randomly getting like a thousand views a month, um, organically. So I'm not running any, any ads on that. And what I realized is, um, based on the usage, I saw that there was some patterns in search search terms and noticed that Mabinogion was a phrase that was searched, which is basically a, a bunch of, um, myth, uh, mythical kind of medieval type stories that are very like culture, um, culture heavy for Welsh culture. Um, so I then was like, Hey, is Mabinogion.com available? It is. So I bought that and, um, my Google.com address is directing people to the job in website. So I'm getting uh, a little bit of referral traffic. And then I've created this Mabinogion.com using, um, chat GTP to summarize the stories, then Google translate to translate them, translate them into Welsh, then using mid journey to create an image that relates to the story and then just put a, a very simple microsite as they would typically call it. And then off the back of that, using Amazon referral links to direct people to buy an actual Mabinogi book, um, created by somebody else. And then secondly, I was like, oh, if you're interested, you might be interested in my books, my kids' Welsh books. So I've added a link there. That's literally a, a week old, maybe that, that site. Um, and that is a classic, classic example of putting something before my VAT return. Um, but it's a small bet. No traffic, no paid media yet, but I'm hoping over time, because people are naturally searching for that, um, it will turn up in Google's um, algorithm because I have submitted it like yesterday or the day before. Uh, and that'd be basically a, a full circle of something that assists in the Welsh culture remit that, as you will hear as I go on, is a big aspect of like me um, and also directs people to my book IP. So I'm trying to as I mentioned last time, create this ecosystem where things are linking together. They might not be paying off now, but a domain, £10 a month, that's okay. The service side kind of covers that and it's a bit of a small bet. So I would say, what kind of small bet could you start with? So it might be something as small as buying a domain name and creating a very, very simple page. And over time you get traffic to it. Then you can start adding referral links to Amazon or, or products selling off the back of that. Or it might be, um, trying a new community or creating a, an info product. It might be, you know, about a particular industry, uh, or a particular job or how to get a new job. Um, and you could write a Google doc, um, of five ways to do that. And then you could start selling it on Gumroad or, or something like that. So 
I've started to do these small bets in a way to uh, remove the pressure of one thing clicking and being successful. Uh, there's a really famous um, indie hacker. Indie hacker is a phrase that, um, they, or, or kind of like um, solo, uh, solo entrepreneur or solopreneur, um, one man band um, running these digital or websites uh, and gaining income from that. And he basically created 70 products or 70 um, different ideas. And four of those were actually making money for him. Um, and then I realized, oh, what now obviously the conversion rate is quite small, but what's my 70? If I have 70 ideas and the conversion rate is 5% or whatever, what, what's my version of that? Um, so I've tried to be doing that in the sense of, I recognize that I love trying new things. I love experimenting. I love being creative. I love context switching. Um, and I'm, I'm mindful that sometimes they can be distractions in a negative sense that kind of take away from the bread and butter, the one thing. Um, but so long as it's kind of like a weekend or a week or something small, uh, I feel like it's a good enough investment to keep my energy levels up, to carry on going back to the one thing that I need to be working on. So yeah, it's a, another thing that, um, that I've kind of tried last year and, um, it's working out quite nicely. The Google doc Cymru thing was a great one. It's organically getting a thousand searches. So it's kind of like, what else could I do uh, in that re remit? Um, someone of the similar vein, uh, used to look for expired domains and would purchase expired domains and then create businesses off the back of those because they already have some search juice that they could utilize as well. And that person is making a lot of money off it. I can't remember the name of the person, um, but I think it was something about onions. There was a domain name about onions. They bought it and now they're selling onions and they're being, uh, they're actually doing really, really well. Uh, I think it's an American guy. Um, so yeah, find uh, search him, um, search for that person on Google. I'm sure you'll be able to find a, a story that links to that. Um, so yeah, I would say try to avoid those branches from slowing you down and getting stuck in the mud. And also what small bets can you start working on until next time? Speak soon.